Well, we're on a roll today, so on to our next lesson with uh, linear equations, constructing simultaneous equations. Now you'll notice, uh, rather, you'll notice the name there says constructing simultaneous equations. It's not actually going to be for me to solve them. Well, that was my intention when I first started anyway, but maybe one or two of the questions I'll go into later on. But again, this whole section is more about actually the language rather than yeah, using the actual maths behind it. So let's make a start. And shall we bring back our trusty whiteboard? Yee, there we go. Um, right, so we know what a simultaneous equation is. It's where two graphs meet in either an infinite number of places or no places or one place. Um, for this particular section, we're going to deal with uh, the idea that they meet at just one place. Well, when they meet at one place, what does that actually mean? It means that there's an overlap. It means that there's a value for which, for both graphs, the same condition is true, or the x value and the y value meet. Uh, how does that particularly work with the type of questions we're dealing with now? Um, okay, so let's look at a basic idea of a question. And again, remember, this is seemingly more about the idea of the language of the question rather than, you know, specifically the question. So it says here uh, a number of words. We've got the idea of the word sum, and we have the word difference. So remembering that sum means add and difference means takes away, it tells me we've got two numbers. We don't know what those two numbers are. We've got to find them. So I suppose it seems logical that we'll call the first number x, and the second number y. Remember, simultaneous equations deals with two unknown variables. And to be able to find and solve a simultaneous equation, we then would need two equations. Ah, well, looking at this, they give us two ideas. The sum of two numbers is 24. So what they're effectively telling me, I suppose, is x plus y is equal to 24. And the difference is 96. So x minus y must be 96. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, well, actually, yep, it does seem to be. So how can two numbers add to be 24 and you have a difference of 96? Well, my mind, as you can see just there, was looking at, well, really? Possible? I suppose it would be with one of them being a negative number. Now I'm going to very, very quickly dispense with all the checks and just come up with a general idea of, well, remember, how do we solve this? I'm going to draw a line. Are one of the columns the same? Well, yeah, they are one the same. So let's deal with the x's. They're both positive. How do we get rid of that? Well, we take them away. So x minus x disappears. And for completeness, I won't put anything there. And y minus minus y becomes 2y. And 24 minus 96. Ooh, what is 24 minus 96? Um, minus 72, which leaves y to be equal to minus 36. There's my y value, and then we can go on and we find that actually when we substitute back in, we get x is equal to 60. Now again, this isn't about solving the simultaneous equations, that's in a previous video. But does that actually work? Do they actually add to give my uh, 24? Yep. And do they have a difference of 96? They do. So tick, smiley face. That was about the language, using the idea that we you know looking at what the words actually mean. Pretty simple example, so let's move on to another one. Three kilograms of jam and two kilograms of butter cost $29, and six kilograms of jam and three kilograms of butter cost $54. Find the cost of one kilogram of jam and one kilogram of butter. How many unknowns do we have? How many things do we not know? Well, it appears we need to know the cost of jam and the cost of butter. I could use X and Y. Nah. Let's use something different. Let's use, I don't know, J and B. Ooh, maybe not. The B looks suspiciously like a number six. And in an exam, that might be complicated. So, whoops, let's actually stick with X and Y. Universal, they sort of know what we mean. So I now know that three kilograms of jam, well, X stands for one kilogram of jam. So three kilograms will be three X and plus two kilograms of butter. So two butter is equal to $29 and six kilograms of jam and three kilograms of butter is equal to $54. And lo and behold, once again, I have my simultaneous equation. And if you remember, because the columns aren't the same, but I need to do something to make the columns the same, and it seems easiest to multiply that one by two, the whole equation, 
And so we come up with 6x plus 4y is equal to 58 and 6x plus 3y is equal to 54. One of the columns are the same, so we can take them away because they're both positive. 4y plus minus 3y gives me y, and y works out to be 4. What does that mean in the great scheme of things? Well, we now know that the cost of butter is $4. And if we go and substitute back in, we find out that x is actually 7. Again, we have turned the language into two equations and gone on to solve. Happy, I would have done my checks and what have you. And so, again, nice and easy, building up the complexity. Things, unfortunately, aren't always that simple. And we start to get to a situation where things get a little bit more complicated. Now, we want to have nice and easy equations form. And we can do that. And we sort of get used to the idea with simultaneous equations that, you know, we're going to, everything is going to fall out in a nice 2x plus 3y equals 72 and x minus 6y equals 1427. And we go through the process and we get to our little answer and we're all very happy. But sometimes, or more specifically now, we've got to start thinking about the maths. And trying to get to this stage of an equation may not actually be specifically or actually that easy. Let's look once again at the question and the actual information they're giving me. So till, mm, two children had 100 marbles between them. So there's two children having 100 marbles between them. After one child had lost half her marbles and the other had lost 20 marbles, both of them were sent to bed with no tea because their parents paid a fortune on those marbles. They're never having them again. They go to bed. Anyway, moving on. After one child had lost half her marbles, or maybe it's more specifically thinking about the fact she's lost her mental faculties. Hmm, interesting. And the other child who lost 20 marbles, they each had an equal number. Now, equal number means they are the same. We know that with maths. How many marbles did each child start and finish with? Okay, so let x be the number of marbles that child 1 started with. And let y be the number of marbles that child 2 started with. So we know that between them, they had 100 marbles. So x plus y is equal to 100 marbles. Well, that looks pretty nice. We've got our first equation. So what's so difficult now? Well, it goes after one child lost half her marbles. So she now has only half the marbles left, which I'm going to write as x over 2. We know that that means a half. The other child has lost only 20. Well, the other child started with y, and now she's lost 20 marbles. And the question goes on interestingly to say they had an equal number. Oh, well, okay, fair enough. So what happened is we know that x over 2 mustn't be now equal to y minus 20. Ugh, that doesn't look anything like what I was expecting. And that, again, is part of the tricks of maths. Because while it doesn't look like what we're expecting, we and probably, or we can rather probably now turn this, using our algebra skills, into this. Well, we don't like a divide by 2. So what do I do to get rid of that divide by 2? I multiply absolutely everything by 2, which leaves x equals 2y minus 40. Well, hold on a moment. That still doesn't look like the form we want, because remember, we want x's and y's on one side and numbers on the other. Well, we can do that. We can move the 2y over to the other side and get x minus 2y equals minus 40, which, when we compare that with x plus y, equals 100 gives me my simultaneous equation. Yes, I can go off and solve this. Again, it's not for the scope of doing this. What I want to do is label the idea that the equations can be formed in any way. And it's the trick of the language. Look for key words. Look for those words that think like equal. And after one child lost half her marbles, you know, the lost had lost just 20. It's putting that together in equation, right? And sometimes it's trial and error. You have to give it a go. There's nothing to say you get it right the first time, but you'll pretty soon find out when it goes wrong. There's only one more example left, and hopefully that will then conclude this section. But let's have a look at an example here where a shopkeeper sells his entire stock of shirts and ties in a sale for $10,000. I didn't realize there was so much profit in shirts and ties. Maybe you must think of looking into 
Shirts and ties. Uh, the shirts were priced at three for a hundred dollars. Uh, good luck in finding a shirt shop in Melbourne that sell anything for three for a hundred dollars. And the ties were twenty dollars each. Much more reasonable. If he had only sold half the shirts and two thirds of the ties, he would have received six thousand dollars, and his wife would have get very upset with him for not taking home enough to keep them in the lifestyle they deserve in Melbourne. How many of each did he sell in the sale? A lot of information. And again, I suppose it comes down to the idea of let's write down somewhere the information that it's been given. Um, so a shopkeeper sells his entire stock of shirts and ties in a sale for $10,000. Well, we seem to have shirts and we seem to have ties. Now, we know that he sells those for $10,000. So we know that shirts plus ties is equal to 10000 I don't know whether that's going to take me anywhere at the moment, but we'll have a look and see. The shirts were priced at three for $100. So I know that three shirts are equal to $100. And the ties were equal to $20 each. Now I suppose the trick of this question, and you'll see in a moment, is actually this information is not needed straight away. It's almost thrown in there to try and trick you. And remember that maths is indeed a B F T, a big fat trick. So let's look at the next set of information. It's very similar to the marble question we just looked at. If he had only sold half the shirts, so he sells half the shirts and, oh, and is a plus, two thirds of the ties, two thirds of the ties, he would have received $6,000. Well, that looks far more like an equation. There's my first one. We like that. That's pretty cool. This one, we've got fractions in it. We don't like it. So let's start turning this into something more. We don't like the divide by two. So how do we get rid of a divide by two? You multiply everything by two. So S plus 4T over three is equal to 12,000. We like that. And again, we don't like this divide by three. So let's get rid of that by timesing everything by three. And you get 3S plus 4t is equal to 36,000. Well, that seems pretty nice to me. I've got two equations now, and they're even in the right form. So we've got 3s plus 4t is equal to 36,000. And I've got s plus t is equal to 10,000. Uh, well, we can't do anything at the moment because neither of the columns are the same. So it would seem obvious that we may multiply the bottom by 3. So that's going to give me 3s plus 3t is equal to 30,000. And for neatness, let's write the top one again. 3s plus 4t is equal to 36,000. Now I'm in a situation where I can take away these two columns. They were both positives, so we'll take them away. So I get that a tie is equal to $6,000. Really? Nah, because remember, we were told that a tie actually sold for $20. This is how much he's made in selling ties. He's made $6,000 in selling ties. Maybe that's now giving you a trick to working out how many ties he needs, but we haven't quite finished the thing. And we know that shirts plus ties is 10000 so we must know that he's actually sold $4,000 worth of shirts. How do we now finish the question? Because remember, it says, how many of each did he sell in the sale? Well, hopefully now the trick to the question was that we've now worked out how much he's made in the sale. So $6,000 worth of ties. Well, we know that's uh, sorry, with ties. We know that a tie is worth $20. So if we do 6000 divided by 20, we find out that we actually sold 300 ties. I tell you, once again, I'm going to start selling ties. And we know that, uh, what did we say? We said $4,000 was made in shirts, but he showed, showed three shirts for $100. So, well, um, what that means is, well, if we get $100, if we divide that by $100, we find out that actually he must have sold 40 lots of three shirts because he you know, basically got $100 for each of the three shirts. So he sold 40 lots of three shirts. So if we multiply by three, we work out that actually he sold 120 shirts. I really must get my teeth sorted. I don't quite know what's going on. But yay! Well, there are answers. 300 ties 
and 120 shirts, which when we go back and check all of our maths, actually works. So the questions are more about your interpretation of the English and trying to write down the English in a mathematical form, but don't get tricked into thinking that actually you've got to come up with this type of equation straight away. It isn't going to do that. It's more about making sure that you can go from one form into the actual form we need and then combine it to find an answer. Well, hopefully this has helped. Have a great day.